ChatGPT has created so much hype that everyone is talking about it. It's now at a stage that if you don't know ChatGPT, you just don't exist. Inspired by the hype, I created an account, played around with ChatGPT, and read all sorts of materials possible from OpenAI to understand how ChatGPT works. In this video, I'm going to explain the idea of alignment and how it is enforced into GPT model using reinforcement learning from human feedback and how it all fits together to form the ChatGPT and its sibling model in StockGPT. So let's jump straight in. The ChatGPT model is a fine-tuned GPT model or more specifically GPT 3.5 model. So it only makes sense to look at the drawbacks of the GPT model before we learn how ChatGPT addresses these drawbacks. One of the first drawbacks of GPT is that it can repeat itself semantically, contradict itself at times. It can even be provoked to throw toxic and harmful content at us. The reason is that it's purely trained to complete sentences and does not understand by any means what the user exactly wants. Or in other words, it does not align with the user. As an example, Let's take the simple question answering task. You are asking GPT-3 the question, explain moon landing to a 10 year old. The example response you get from GPT-3 are as below. It just says, explain the theory of gravity to a six year old. Explain the theory of relativity to a six year old in a few sentences, etc. As you can see, GPT system cannot explain. It doesn't even understand what explain means. In this context. So how do we train the AI system to explain? And this pretty much comes down to aligning the system to human intentions. So the human intention here is to get the explanation for the question and it pretty much this problem that ChatGPT solves. Let's see the response from ChatGPT for the same question. So how does ChatGPT achieve this alignment? It comes down to a technique called reinforcement learning from human feedback. Before we dive into reinforcement learning from human feedback, let me give a brief about reinforcement learning itself. In reinforcement learning, you have an agent, say a robot, interacting with its environment. In this environment, the robot has to do some action now the situation of the robot and the environment at any given time t is called its state. At a time t, if the robot does any action, we can calculate something called the reward. And that reward for that action can be calculated as a function of the state and the action. This reward is calculated as r t plus 1 because the calculated reward feeds into the next cycle of the state and action. Also, this reward is the feedback to the agent to say if the action is good or bad. The reward is usually defined by a function f that's quite mathematical. And then, while training the agent, we optimize this function. There's also the notion of policies and values but I won't go too much into the details. Now just imagine a situation where this reward is no longer mathematical, but involves humans in the loop. This idea gives birth to reinforcement learning from human feedback or learning from human preferences. There is a fantastic demo and blog from OpenAI that explains how an agent can be trained to backflip using human feedback rather than using a reward function. The idea is to let the agent act randomly in its environment and at regular intervals, two video clips are taken and shown to humans to choose which of the behaviors is close to a backflip. They're given their user interface 
that they can choose whether the left one or the right one is a better behavior. Gathering all these human feedbacks as a dataset, the agent can then be trained rather than using mathematical functions as reward. This is again another example where the humans provide feedback to the agent playing the Atari breakout game. The feedback of the human is shown in the bar on the right. The bar indicates the human giving high rating when the agent does the right action of catching the ball. With the understanding of reinforcement learning with human feedback and alignment, let's go into ChatGPT now. There are clearly three steps in this figure taken from the OpenAI blog about ChatGPT. The model architecture is pretty much the same as InstructGPT, but with GPT 3.5 in place of GPT 3. So these are the three steps. I will go into the details about each of the steps, but as an overview, in the first step, they fine tune the GPT model for question answering task. In step two, they train what is called a reward model. And finally, in step three, they use a reinforcement learning to train both the models from step one and step two together iteratively. Step one involves collating a dataset of human written demonstrations of the desired output behavior on prompts submitted to the OpenAI API. The input prompts also include some prompts written by the labelers themselves. Now, the outputs are called the desired outputs because it's exactly the human labeler's response to the prompts. For example, for the prompt explain moon landing to a six-year-old, the desired output could be the moon landing happened a long time ago, in 1969, or the moon landing was a really exciting event when people from Earth travel all the way to the moon. So this dataset could be used to train the GPT 3.5 model and establish the first supervised baseline or the supervised fine-tuned model. This procedure is pretty much fine-tuning of any given model but the dataset contain responses that are more aligned to the human questions rather than biased to a standard NLP dataset. Now in step two, they gather another dataset which they call the comparison dataset. This was done by giving the supervised fine-tuned model a prompt and asking it to generate responses a number of times. In this figure, we can see four responses, A, B, C, and D for a given prompt. But in actual training of the model, they seem to have generated somewhere between four and seven responses. These responses are then ranked by a labeler considering truthfulness and harmlessness of the output. This is similar to voting for the backflips. By choosing which of the two backflips is better, you remember my previous example about reinforcement learning. Now, I was also wondering how we get several responses from the same prompt. It turns out ChatGPT does churn out different responses for the same question. The responses I've shown here are the actual responses I got from ChatGPT by asking it to explain moon landing to a six-year-old. Putting together a bunch of prompts and the several rank responses created the comparison dataset. With the new comparison dataset or the reward model dataset, they train a reward model. So what is the reward model? Starting from the SFT model, they remove the last unembedding layer which the output words and replace with a single scalar output. You can think of it as a small linear neural network with a single node output. And in the input to the reward model, you give both the prompt and the outputs from the SFT model. So for output A, you get the scalar reward A and for output B you get the scalar reward B and these scalar outputs are batched together to train the reward model with the ground truth ranks from the comparison data set which are all scalars. Thus we train another model called the reward model in step 2. If you think bro broadly so far, we have fine-tuned a GPT model 
and we have created the SFT model to create text outputs and in step 2 we have trained another model called the reward model to rank the generated outputs which turns out a single number called the scalar rank or the in reinforcement terms called the reward. Now we are only interested in the fine-tuned GPT model because that is what is going to give us the chat outputs. So in order to reward the GPT model when it does well, we need to train it again with the reward outputs from the reward model. So we fine tune the GPT model once again, this time with the rewards as the feedback. Because we are dealing with the rewards, this is where the reinforcement element comes into play. Now PPO stands for Proximal Policy Optimization. It's just the optimization algorithm in reinforcement learning. Thinking of a chatbot like ChatGPT, in terms of reinforcement learning, the chatbot is the agent and the action that it does is generating response for a prompt. And it gets rewards for generating harmless, truthful content and it gets penalized otherwise. And the state is nothing but the every response that we get from the chatbot. The state just changes to the next one. I hope you're now aligned with ChatGPT model and how it differs from its predecessors, the ChatGPT models. I hope this high-level overview gives you a better understanding of ChatGPT. We are entering an exciting era where reinforcement learning meets natural language processing. If you're interested in the limitations of ChatGPT and in finding out what the future holds for AI at scale, please stay tuned and